Hey. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture. You're here with your friendly neighborhood host. It is me. I'm Cardi. Welcome. Glad you have found me. Today we are talking about, is photography a skill or is photography a talent? That is, I don't know if I'd call it an age old question, but it's definitely something that I think it's worth talking about. Is photography a skill or a talent? Here's a story. I photographed Abby Lincoln, the great jazz singer, Abby Lincoln. I photographed her in 1995. And after I finished and she, I mean, this was during rehearsal after she came off stage, I had to tell her how amazing she was. And she said something that was so profound to me, like so absolutely profound. She says, that creativity that you see up there while I'm singing, that creativity, that doesn't belong to me, son. That doesn't belong to me. I just have the ability to tap in. She said that creativity lives in a stream just above us, you know, and that stream is ever flowing. And the extra lucky ones, the extra special ones are able to tap into that creative stream and allow it to flow through them. I thought, wow, that's profound. <laughs> Do you think our creativity belongs to us? Or are we actually just channeling creativity? So, if you think of this lens ball, think of this lens ball as your talent. This is your creative core, you know? And that creative core has to be able to tap in to that creative stream that exists just above us, that creative core. Let's go, Devon Shu. Glad you're here. Everybody who's watching live, by the way, thank you. Devon Shu, Devlin, Freddie, Calligraphy, Xperi, Matthew, Morgan, the newest member. Welcome, everybody. So, this is your talent. This is your creative core. Our creative core has to be able to tap in to that creativity that exists just above us. When that connection happens, our creative core connecting to that creative stream that exists just above us, it's almost like the work that we create happens without us. It's almost that the photographs that we create it's almost like they're ch we're channeling them. It's like they just come through us. So picture this. Picture a, this being your creative core and picture it rolling down a snowy hill. And as it rolls down that snowy hill, this creative core that we have, this creative talent, all kinds of snow is attaching to it as it rolls down. That snow, those are the skills that we learn along the way that support that creative core, that talent. Our talent lies in the ability to connect our creativity, our creative core with the creativity that exists all around us. Creativity is everywhere. We just have to unlock our mind to be able to see the creativity that exists everywhere. Let's go, David. Thanks for the $5.95. David just dropped $5. David, thank you. I appreciate you. You know what happens when people do grand gestures like becoming a member or giving me actual hard-earned cash? What happens is I burn my house down. So I'm doing that right now. Thank you. I appreciate you. You get the smoke. My guy, David. Thank you. So our talent lies in the ability to connect our creativity 
with the universal creativity that exists all around us. Now, there's three types of artist. There is the literary artist, the musical artist, and the visual artist. You can imagine, without musical talent, you could learn to play songs, you could learn how to play notes, technically. But does that make you a musician? We all have the ability to write. We all have the ability to read and write. In fact, reading and writing is something that we all do almost more than any single other thing. How many of us are writers? How many of us are writers? Can one be a writer without the talent for writing? Photography is one of the tools, one of the visual arts, I mean. Photography is one of the visual arts where the tools, the tools do so much of the work for us. The tools, they do so much of the work for us. Like, all we need to do is decide what to frame. If you think of a visual artist like a painter or a sculptor, are they doing more work than a photographer? Can one be a skilled photographer without visual talent? Dorch, welcome. Let's go. Welcome back. Thank you, buddy. Can one be a New photographer, member. a skilled photographer without visual talent? When photography was invented, one had to be a technician. You had to process, you had to print. It was a craft, it was artistry. Think about Ansel Adams. Think about Helmut Newton. Think about all your favorite photographers from days gone by and how photography was not only a technical craft. When I started, you had to be a technician. I learned processing, printing. I'm a master printer, a master color printer, a master black and white printer. Skills that I don't know, I don't use, I mean. Photography was a craft. It was artistry. Being a photographer takes creativity and imagination. It takes an eye for detail. It takes patience, it takes flexibility, knowledge, skills, understanding, and more patience. I mean, you can treat photography mathematical and just use the rules of uh, composition, the rules of business, and just make photography work, right? You can do that, right? Maybe. My thoughts are, is photography a skill or is it a talent? Truly, photography is a complete balance of both talent and skill. Without the talent for photography, the skills, although you can learn the skills, to be a photographer, but do you do your photograph does your photos have soul? Some have a stronger sense of talent, but they have to work on the technical skills. Some are the opposite. Some the technical side of photography. That's all they care about. That's all they want to talk about. But is what they're shooting does that is anybody interested in what they're shooting? One can't only work on the skills without having a natural talent, I believe. Not everyone is supposed to be a photographer. That's controversial. Not everyone is supposed to be a photographer. Just like not everybody is supposed to be an aircraft pilot or a surgeon or an NFL star. 
Making a living at photography is not for everyone. It just isn't. Making a living at photography is for the ones that have both the skill and the talent and the passion and obsession to improve continuously and progress and make the actual act of photography a part of your world. There's no dabbling in professional anything. There's no dabbling in professional swimming or professional skateboarding or professional filmmaking. There's no dabbling. Anyone making a true mark in the photography world is obsessed, obsessed. Maybe you just want to make be better at photography. Maybe you just want to make better pictures because you have a passion for it or you have a talent for it and you want to learn more about the skill side. Maybe you don't need to actually make money from your photography. Maybe you don't need to. Maybe you have an amazing job that you love and you just love photography and love making the best photographs that you can. And if that's you, this is a beautiful place to be. With the invention of digital photography, much, 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 much of the necessary skills, the ability to be able to visualize a photograph beforehand, much of the necessary skills to be able to visualize the photograph beforehand was taken away. It was taken away from photography. Digital gave photography to everyone, to everyone. You get to see the photo right there on the screen as you take it. Soon after, we put an incredible device in everyone's pocket. We gave everybody an iPhone and suddenly there's the most incredible phone slash camera slash video camera in everyone's pocket. Suddenly, everybody thought that they had enough skill to be a photography, to be a photographer. Photography is easy. Digital has made photography easy. Imagine, I started taking pictures when I was 14. I didn't see a, photo a photograph the second that I took it until I was 34 years old. Without, with the exception of Polaroid, which every pro photographer would attach a Polaroid back to their pro camera, take a shot so they could see what it looked like. And then you would take the Polaroid back off, put your film on and shoot your film. But seeing your pictures as you took them, I made photographs for 20 years before that happened. But I can say this though, 100%, I can say this with 100% assurity, digital photography made me better. Without question, digital photography made me better. Seeing my images as I took them allowed me to use my already existing understanding and knowledge of photography and push it even further. I feel like I've always had a talent for seeing things and being able to capture them. I think that I learned that skill or that I had that skill when I was 15. I picked up a camera at 14. And by the time I was 17, I decided I was gonna be a photographer. Once I realized I had talent and it was someone else that told me I had talent, my whole life, my entire life from age 17 was shaped to hone my talent, to harness my photography talent and to turn it into a career. Because I discovered photography so early, I started making, my, making money with my camera before my 20th birthday. I think enough time has died with the digital explosion for people to realize that photography still isn't that easy. But digital photography has also brought so many people to the realization that they actually do have a talent for photography. Digital photography and having a camera 
in your pocket has brought photography to so many people. It's why you're watching this video to see if I have the answer as to whether photography is a skill or a talent. Really though, you should be asking yourself, do I have the talent to be a photographer? That's what you should be asking yourself. Don't ask me, ask yourself, do I have the talent to be a photographer? Do I have the passion? Do I have the obsession to actually make it happen? There's no fast track to anything, by the way. There's no fast track to anything. Fast track to being a famous musician, fast track to being a famous artist. Being a working in-demand photographer is a lifelong goal. Being a working in-demand photographer is a lifelong goal. I'm 53, that's still my goal. I haven't taken another job other than photography since I was 19 years old. By the way, cameras do not make photographs any more than paintbrush, paintbrushes make paintings. Cameras don't make photographs any more than paintbrushes make paintings. They are merely a tool for the operator. They're just a tool. You never hear Picasso talking about his paintbrushes. You never hear Picasso saying, oh my God, I got the best paintbrushes. That's why I'm a photographer. That's why I'm a painter. You never hear Hendrix talking about his guitar. Let's go, Devon Shu. Welcome back, buddy. Glad you're here. Every gifted person needs to hone their skills with practice and dedication. Just how you talented remember. writers, just how talented writers, let's go Dev, glad you're here. Dev is an incredibly talented photographer from India via Australia back to India. The talent level that Dev Anshu has and has had, <laughs> Dev started watching me when he was 19. Dev is almost 22 now incredible talent make sure you google devon shu damli and look at his photography and website he's absolutely incredible every gifted person needs to hone their skills with practice and dedication talented writers know that they need to weave a story through their imagination and through their life experiences photography weaves a story through a single photograph, through a single frame, through a single photograph, a picture. When we discuss skill, when, it, when we're talking about photography, when we think about skill, we're thinking about the ability to control the aperture or the shutter speed, change the ISO, the white balance, understanding your skills, understanding the camera, right? Obviously understanding the camera and its functions is very important to be good at photography. But the usefulness um, of this ability, sometimes it's not paired with the passion or the drive or the obsession to utilize those skills. It's because you're a talented photographer. Are you obsessed about making a living at it you can know as much as you want about how beneficial it is to have a half pressed shutter remote or a focus analyzer but if you have no artistic talent no creativity or appreciation for light and its bewildering properties it's pretty difficult to become an amazing photographer you know, it's funny, man, because the shy ones and I was a shy person. I am a shy person. People don't think that I'm a shy person because I'm here yapping on YouTube. But I don't understand. I don't think you guys understand my social anxiety. I don't think you understand like how I'm still like an eight year old kid, you know?
I got picked on. I was the only black kid in the white school. I wore glasses. I got picked on continually. So photography was like how I expressed myself creatively. And once I found that outlet, and once I realized that it could actually be a career, like I needed to learn all the skills that would get me there. But I don't think that if I didn't have the natural talent for it, I wouldn't have the passion to do it. You know, I feel like if you've gotten this far in today's podcast, I feel like you might have a thought on whether you think that photography is a skill or a talent. You know, I'm definitely up to hear questions. If you want to ask me a question, it's super, super simple. Just type the exclamation mark with no spaces right after type the letter Q. If you type exclamation mark Q and then push enter, I get alerted and then you can ask your question in another chat message. That is the way to ask me a question because the way that my chat goes, sometimes it's difficult to catch it. <sighs> what do you guys think about creativity being something that exists just above us and we have our own creativity, our own creative core and our goal is to connect those two, to tap in to the universal creativity and use our own core talent and creativity to like map out a world. What do you think of that? I mean, that's for me the closest, that's the closest explanation that I've heard. Cameron, you are a part of this crew and I'm glad that you're here as well. My guy, I'm glad that you're here as well. Gifted member. Yo, my calligraphy again has gifted a membership. Calligraphy, you are an absolute savage. Calligraphy does this pretty much once per episode. He chooses somebody to give a free membership to. So calligraphy, thank you. I appreciate you. Understand that um, how I found photography and how you find photography, it's going to be different. The thing that, the thing that carries through between you and I is our desire to be amazing with the camera. But we have to remember that it's not the camera that's taking the photos. It's us. We are, we are the vessel. We are the mirror. We are the ones that have the vision to be able to capture what it is that we see, you know? And I think many photographers, many photographers approach professional photography backwards. Like they love photography. So then they make photos and then they don't necessarily know where or how those photos will turn into having a career. I think the smart bet or the smart way to approach professional photography is you either like to shoot people, places or things. And in each one of those people, places, or things, there is a way to find a niche. I shoot people. So I also, I don't take pictures. I make pictures, which is idea and execution. Of course, I take pictures. Everybody takes pictures. But the goal is to get past just, I saw something pretty and I clicked my shutter to I have an idea and I'm going to execute this idea using photography. I think once you get to that place where I have an idea and I'm going to execute that idea through photography, I think once you get to that place, you're able to, you're able to articulate not just your own ideas, but you start being able to articulate I, the ideas of others. And once you have the ability to articulate someone else's idea, well, then now you can be paid to execute other people's ideas for advertising, for magazine editorial. And 
when you take pictures and you just have a variety of photographs in your portfolio and they're not targeted, they're not super chat specialized. Let's go, David. Thank you for another super chat. That's the second one of this episode, my guy. Thank you. Um, when you're just taking photos and not thinking about where they can be used, like I like to call it applied photography. Applied photography is I'm going to make these photos and these photos are going to intrigue these type of clients to hire me to make these type of photos. Like that's the whole idea when it comes to why we shoot photos. I'm a magazine photographer. I shoot the faces of today's generation. So in my photo, in my photography, my photos will look like they're in magazines and they will look like they are commercially used because they are. So you'll rarely or you'll never see me taking photos and sharing them on my website because people hire me to execute ideas. They don't want to see fluff. I mean, that's just for my, from my own personal perspective. So um, Morgan had a question. Morgan said, I've done a few photo shoots and whenever I get ready to go, I get physically sick until I get there. <laughs> Morgan, let's go. Okay, here, here's just something you need to know. This is something that you need to know. This is something that you need to know. I, Steve Cardi, from year one in business until year five in business, I got physically sick every single time I was about to shoot. Question. I got physically sick almost like to the point where I was throwing up like I couldn't sleep before the shoot and by the way to this day to this day still I have a hard time sleeping I have a hard time sleeping before photo shoots I'm too excited I, there's too much at stake I, I care about it too much I care too much which is why yeah but guess what it gets easier it guess what but you're, you're like, how long have you been going? How long have you been doing that? How long has it been going on? Just know that the more that you continually deliver, the more that you continually succeed on these photo shoots, the reason that you feel that way is because you care. And caring, caring registers in the body. Because you care so much, you actually feel sick. And that's good, because that means that you don't think that you're good enough yet, which is great because you shouldn't think that you're amazing yet. And like, I, I imagine this, okay? Helmut Newton, one of my f most influential and most favorite photographers of all time. Helmut Newton said this, I didn't get good until I was 50. This is Helmut Newton's words, okay? And Helmut Newton started shooting for Vogue and Harper's Bazaar when he was 22. Helmut Newton's after shooting 35 years of editorial professional work, he said, I didn't get good until I was 50. So for me, I just passed 50. Okay. I'm just starting to get to the point where I think that I'm, I'm just starting to put it together. So if you're brand new and you think <laughs> I am the, like, I'm the man like, or the girl or whatever, like that kind of headspace. Ego gets in the way. Ego gets in the way of understanding, of progression. Ego gets in the way of being open to learning new things, new techniques, new ways of doing things. Your ego of feeling like you know everything blocks you. And in fact, other people who know information won't share it with you because you radiate this feeling like you know everything. Because the thing that's hard, because when you're in that situation, you don't know what you don't know, which is why you think that you know everything or everything that there could know because just because you understand your camera and you have the ability to make photographs. 
you know? Running a business, being a pro photographer, doing that decade after decade after decade, still being in demand, still being called, still doing jobs, like that kind of a head, like, yeah. So the fact that I, I do this YouTube channel is, is first of all, to give back to the next generation. I think that it's super important. I think that not enough professional photographers as they get older, give back to the younger generation. There's too many of the younger generation who don't really haven't experienced anything yet on YouTube telling other photographers how to do photography, which I think is absolutely preposterous. So yeah, I, I have a photography channel and I, I talk more about the mindset of a emerging pro and of a working pro because I've been both. I've been a working pro for three decades. Before I was a working pro, I was an emerging pro. So I know all the stages. I know all the stages and I also know the ups and I know the horrible downs and I know the points where you wanna quit. I know all of those situations and I got out of all of those situations. So I know how to help you get out of those kind of situations. So <sighs> anyways, so we had another question from James. James said, how do I approach the balance between the technical proficiency and the creative expression in my work? James, it's a super great question. I mean, the technical proficiency comes from my obsession. Like, technical proficiency comes from obsession. Obsession. Creative expression comes from... Welcome. Um, thanks, Simon. Thanks for becoming a subscriber. Um, I think creative expression comes from like a different place but also you need to be visually inspired to see what people are doing out there in the universe if you're not looking to see what's happening by looking at behance by looking at like magazines by seeing who's getting hired who's shooting the editorials within your niche if you're not seeing that who's shooting the product stuff who's shooting the architecture the landscape photography that's getting hired if you're not looking to see who's doing that stuff how would you know, you know? So I stay um, creatively inspired by looking to see what the top, top shooters are doing in the industry. And then the technical side of it, I just like, I'm obsessed. So I always just wanna learn how to do stuff more efficiently, better, stronger. That's why I upgrade my gear. That's why I'm not shooting with a camera from, you know? That's why I'm not shooting with my 5DSR, which was my previous camera, because I needed an entire 4K ecosystem. So in order for me to get a 4K ecosystem, I future-proof myself, meaning I bought a super high-end mirrorless camera that I can shoot incredible photography with eye tracking and all that. But it is also an incredible video camera that shoots 8K raw video, meaning uncompressed video. All other cameras shoot a series of JPEGs that yes, you can do C-Log2 and blah, 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 but the R5 shoots raw video, which is closer to the red camera, which is a series Real of raw cash. files. Yo, Oki. Oki, you crazy. Why are you so generous, man? Oki, thank you. Oki has just put down some real cash. Oki, thank you, my guy. Oki is another one of my absolutely incredible, super, super generous viewers. Oki has gifted more subscribers to this channel than anybody else on this channel who watches me. Oki, thank you. Like, you're an incredible man. I appreciate you. Thank you, Oki. Crazy. Um, the generosity that I feel from you guys, uh, and by, by the way, you're under no obligation to do any of that shit, and, and I do appreciate it, but you pay me with your time. You pay me with your time by watching my content. You know, that pays me because the most valuable thing in the world is your time and you giving me your time um, means everything. So, um, yeah, uh, donations are not encouraged. Stop giving me money. Um, okay. Questions before we... Um, ego stagnates creativity, in my opinion. This felt very well sped. Very well said, DJ Reg. Very well said. Um, very well said. 
I feel like um, ego <laughs> ego makes you blind is a great way to describe it. Ego makes you blind. If you want to like walk the world like this, um, look for things that feed your ego. <laughs> the quickest way to success is by killing your ego. I believe. I feel like um, the quickest way to success is being egoless and transparent. Say like, I'm sad. Say I'm happy. Say this makes me feel this. Say this makes me feel this. Say things are going amazing in my business because of this. Say things are going horrible in my photography business because of this. Transparency is what will get you through. <laughs> <laughs> and transparency and killing ego that's the vibes but again i'm starting to get philosophical and people are starting to tune out so you know <laughs> cosman welcome gaming saves lives welcome devlin i'm glad you're here devlin's a great supporter i'm glad you're now fully a part of the system and submitting photos steven c an amazing supporter and an amazing mod Turtle Drones in the Hizzy, Ravenstone. I appreciate you for being there. Ravenstone says, I always see nervousness as a good thing. And I also, um, I agree with you. I, I see nervousness as a good thing. I see nerves um, as caring. I see anxiety as nerves with bad, with, without um, information. That's a good way to put it. I think nerves are positive. I think anxiety is when you add a lack of information, your nerves turn into anxiety. And how you quash anxiety is with information. You need to learn more about the situation. If you're afraid to talk to strangers, learn more about straight learn more about a single person that you don't know practice with one person interacting with a stranger once you break that fifth wall you're like oh my god strangers are awesome talk to strangers you should talk to strangers in fact you know we're told when we're raised don't talk to strangers but in fact we should be talking to strangers every day because strangers are the ones that educate us you know dj thank you for giving up five dollars for me I said, stop giving me money. It's very clear. You guys don't follow instructions. DJ, thank you. But again, not necessary. This is a commercial free stream. I'm setting this stuff up so you guys can just chill. It's a Sunday. You know, I had a, I got some devastating news this morning. So I'm on a bit of a different tip today. You know, I had um, this episode planned. Is photography a skill or a talent? Nice, tight you know, 30 minutes. But I also realized like, <clears throat> very good friend of mine, who's a director, I went to high school with him. I shot the Porter for him with him. He's a director of the Porter nurse fighter boy. Akilah's escape, um, and a few other projects, he passed away this morning. And uh, it, it just like hit me like, I was not, I was not going to broadcast today. I was just <laughs> done, you know, like I can't broadcast when I'm fucking crying, you know, my friend died. So it, it, it's just one of those things that like, I'm always the positive guy and I'm always here to bring the light and the love and the positivity. So I also have to be in the right podcast, the right podcast space. And I, you know, I took a minute, I'm in the right podcast space, but at the same point, it's like, the point that is the most fucked up about everything that you should take away from what me saying this amazing director who like I knew since high school passed, what you should take from that is time is short, shit's fleeting, you know? So if you're wondering, like, should you start that thing? If you're wondering, should you start your life, start your photography? It's like, Yo, yo, you can like the smartest time to start your photography career was 10 fucking years ago. That was the smartest time to photo start your photography career 10 years ago. The second smartest time is today, right now. If you can't go back in time and start your career back then, start today. 
because time is short. Would you rather spend your time doing something that you really love? Would you rather spend your time starving for your, the thing that you want to do more than anything or spend your time nine to five, 40 hours a week, thousands and thousands of hours a year fulfilling someone else's dreams? Like literally, if you don't take charge of your life and your destiny, someone else gives you a life and a destiny and you just tap in every day do your and do it for someone else. And that mindset, fuck that shit, you know? And forgive my, forgive my French. I don't like to curse on my show, especially on a Sunday. But um, people, people need at times to hear a curse because it makes them listen. It makes them shake into, into action. There's no smarter time to live the life that you're supposed to live than right now. If you're supposed to be a photographer, each day that goes by that you're not doing every single thing in your power to make that a reality, every day that goes by, you know what I mean? There's one day lost, which sucks, but it's true. So I, Welcome. I want you guys, um, by the way, gaming saves lives. Thank you for your donation. Again, <laughs> you guys are horrible at following instructions horrible so the question of the day is photography a skill or a talent gaming saves lives says this talent is natural skill takes practice so it is both in my opinion thank you very much willie thank you everybody who's uh thank you experience Xperia. I also 100% believe uh, and agree with what Gaming Saves Lives says, which is it's both. It absolutely is both. It is both a skill and it is a talent. And without the talent for photography, without the natural talent for being able to see visually, you won't have the passion to learn the skills that you need to to become a photographer. Some are so passionate about the technology. They're so passionate about the camera. They love the camera so much that they're like, oh, I have the new Nikon Z7, blah, 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 with the 70 to blah. It's like, okay, cool. But again, it's just like Picasso talking about his paintbrush. It's like, okay, cool. You have a cool camera. What do your photos look like? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what does the photography look like? They're not hanging the cameras in the galleries. They're hanging what the cameras do, you know? And the cameras don't do anything. They're just a tool. They're just on the other end of our arm as an extension from our brain to what we see out there. It's all they are. So, um... Ex Xperia says you're blessed to hear this message right now. Um, indeed. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow is gone. I'm, yeah, tomorrow um, never comes. Yesterday's gone. Today's all we have. That's what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, I was reading your words, um, Stephen C., Devin Shu says, I feel like it's both a skill and or a talent. Um, but in my opinion, you need both together to make it big. I mean, I just think it's about soul, you know, like think about the written word. We all have the ability to write. But the question is, does that make us a writer? You know, we all making a photograph you can pass your camera to your grandmother and she can take a photo they've made the barrier for entry so low that anyone can do it anyone can take a photo but it's like making a photo which is idea and execution that that is 
the hard part. And if you're going to take photos, it's got to be at a Magnum level or a National Geographic level. Like, because the people who take photos, like Alan Schaller and like the most, inc like that photography, that photography is like an orchestra. It's so impossible to take a perfect picture without control. Just it, it happening and you just like get that exact moment. That is really insane. Like it's actually easier to have an idea and execute it with light and control. So in fact, taking pictures at the level one needs to, to make a living at it is if you're not doing that eight hours a day, every day for 10 years, you'll never get to the point where you're, you're making a living at taking pictures because yeah. And if you're practicing photography that way by just taking photos, as far as how fast you can progress, I think that that's also incredibly slow. Take pictures of one thing. Say, I want to shoot portraits. So every day you go out, you find strangers and you shoot portraits of faces every day. Do that for a month, do that for two months, do that for a year. Your portraits are going to be amazing. And you'll have a year of them to look back and see how you were on day one versus how you are on the, during the, at the end of the year. But if you just shoot anything as a photographer, then the, how you are in the beginning of the year shooting anything and how you are at the end of the year shooting anything. Yes, you might see a little bit of progress, but there's no style because there's, you, you haven't created any rules for yourself. As a photographer, we have to create rules. We have to create like, I shoot this, I do this. What are my rules? I have, here, I'll tell you my rules as I show you my photographs. I have a straight up approach that is modern, modest, and iconic. I have an unfiltered way of shooting photographs that make you feel like you're taking the pictures. And in fact, I make photographs in such a way that makes you think 100% that you could take this photo. I am a straight up, no bullshit, no post-production, just natural light specifically. And if I'm using artificial light, I always use artificial light the same way. So I have rules for how I shoot. I have rules. I use white, black, or gray backgrounds, but sometimes not. I like smoke. <laughs> we have to have rules for our photographs. Once we have rules, oh, by the way, here's another rule. My natural light comes from left or right, depending on the situation. My artificial light always comes from the right, as in right to left. Rules. I create rules. You can even see my right to left light in this picture. That's natural light. Natural light. Anyways, rules. All right, more questions, more questions before I, um, before I dip out of here, guys. I appreciate the support from everybody today. I appreciate the support. Um, honestly, Matthew says, I think photography is a talent to see something before it's real, to feel something before you do something. That's a talent. Amazing. I, and again, it's, it's something that I also, I, I, I partake in that belief, but I, I feel like I said earlier, your talent is your creative core. And that creative core is this. This is your creative core. It exists right here, right here, okay? It's connected to our brain, but it's, it's here, okay? Up here is universal creativity. When magic stuff happens, like Matthew, when you made that portrait, wearing your grandfather's apparel, putting his fireman's helmet on, like that photograph was a universal creativity that you tapped into using your own core connectivity and creativity and that connection, that's why that photograph is magic. That's what I think. Because we can't, I don't think that we can own it. I don't think that we can own it. 
once you start to own or thinking that you own your creativity, then it eludes you. It eludes you. Like if you think that you own it, then you're bored. You, you don't see anything. You go out to shoot and you see nothing. Everything around you looks like uninteresting if you think that you own the creativity. But if you think like, I'm gonna go out to shoot and I'm gonna tap in to the universal creativity that's out there, you'll see photographs all around you. That's what I think. What do you think of that? Um, so um, here's another question. Here's another question. How do you know if it's not a shoot for you um, or if it's a shoot or if it's something challenging that feels impossible. I need more context for that because it, it's like, it, okay, I'm a, I'm a literally a portrait photographer and someone's asking me to shoot food. It's like, call Scott Ciccino, call Mike Alberstadt, call like the plethora of photographers that shoot food better than me. So, you know, th that's, I, I'm not, I'm not sure about that question because I know what I shoot. So I don't put myself into a situation where the shoot's not for me. I've already said no to that shoot before it. So, you know, like I challenge myself. I put myself in, in situations where I'm outside my comfort zone, like with street photography. Street photography is not for me. I am not a street photographer, but I have social anxiety. So me doing street photography and putting my work out there and talking about it is therapy. I like doing it, even if everybody hates my street photography. I mean, and I think that I'm, as a street photographer, after 30 years experience being a portrait and editorial photographer, shooting on location, my street photography, I give it a six out of 10, six. Because I don't like, I don't have ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have ego. And I know what a 10 out of 10 looks like. I know what an 11 out of 10 looks like. And I know that I'm not that, you know? So, um, uh, Slimmy says that was exactly the point. That's exactly what, that's exactly what you're saying. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just, there's such great power in saying no. There's such great power of saying no. And, um, I made a video, I dropped it on Friday about, um, seven way, seven ways that you can reclaim time to shoot and saying no was what, one of the things that I said in there, the power of saying no. It's great power in saying no. It's amazing. Saying no gives you more value. Even if you're not making money, saying no increases your value. It increases your respect. You know? Yeah. And by the way, Romeo says that, um, that he sees a photo every time he goes out. Romeo, guess what? I, I see a photo every time I go out too. But I also, I know my niche so when I see a photo, I try to think of like as a place for me to bring a person and make a photo of a person in that place. Shooting just spaces, I do that from time to time as well, but no one's hiring me to shoot spaces. People hire me to shoot people. So <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, it's art and commerce. Sometimes you have to create work that will get you work. Most times you have to create work that will get you work. So the things that I show in my portfolio are things that I want to get hired to do, you know? Is the first paid shoot the hardest to get? Um, it depends on what your niche is and how good you are at talking to people. Um, if you're specialized, then getting your first shoot is as simple as how good your quality is. And also, like, are you ready to get your first paid shoot? Are you ready to service a client at the same level that I would service a client? Like if someone had the option of hiring you or hiring me, who would they choose? Would it be, would it be a hard decision? Like get to the point where you're undeniable, get to the point where you're undeniable. And again, being undeniable comes from shooting one thing better than anyone else. One thing. And in fact, being undeniable, oftentimes the most undeniable photographers get recognized for not just one style or one genre for one photo. I'm going to show you the work of two photographers before I dip out here. The first photographer is Martin Scholler. And Martin Scholler, you know Martin Scholler, but you don't know Martin Scholler. 
but you know Martin Scholler because Martin Scholler became famous for one photograph and he has photographed everyone. This is the work of Martin Scholler. And now when I say Martin Scholler, tell me you don't know the work of Martin Scholler. Tell me you haven't seen Martin Scholler portraits everywhere. Yes or yes. Martin Scholler got famous for one photo. And that photo was the close-up. Martin Scholler close-up. And Scholler shot everybody. Absolutely everybody. And the same photo, the same perspective, the same light, the only variation is how he would gradiate the background. Same photo, no expression, no smile. Like this photo made Martin Welcome. Scholler a household name. But how come there's no variety and how come he's not doing this? It, because after a while, this becomes a signature. This is why rules and this is why style is so important. This it's like people want to be photographers, so they shoot everything. But you want to be a photographer? Shoot one thing. Shoot one thing and one thing only. Because guess what? You will become known for that one thing. Martin Scholler, even if you don't know his name, tell me you haven't seen this style. Tell me how you haven't seen this photograph. And guess what else? You don't even have to like it. You don't even have to like it. In fact, you could right now be at home saying, I don't even like this style. It's not even flattering. But guess what? That's part of the charm. That's part of the style is that it's not even flattering. It's almost like a record of what your face looks like. That's Martin Scholler. Guess what else? Two front lights, two, f two vertical panels that make everybody's eyes look like cat eyes. The vertical panel is a Martin Scholler ism. And he stands in between these two vertical strips so you can't see him, but it makes every pupil look like cat eyes. This is a Scholler ism one of the most imitated portrait photographers in the world. But again, photographers want to shoot everything. They want to just mess around with styles and just, but they forget like shooting one photo is how you become a household name. So what's the quickest way to get your first job? Get insane on known for one thing one thing get used and get better and get insane at doing one photo he doesn't even change the crop he doesn't move this way he doesn't skim this way he's not like oh that looks great that looks great that looks great it's all one photo over and over and over and over and over and over and over again of everybody and also now it becomes self-directed projects like let's shoot death row people who were on death row and got exonerated let's take pictures of people who were on death row but were innocent and got freed the last minute death row people and let's shoot what the same picture the same picture again the same picture oh let's shoot holocaust survivors and guess what let's shoot the same picture the same picture the same picture this is how you become a household name is by doing one thing because now everybody has to have a Martin Scholler. Everybody has to be photographed in this way by that artist. And anyone else who does this style, they're imitating him. That's the power of style. But again, shoot whatever you want, play whatever LUTs you want play with ever like with whatever techniques you want whatever styles change it every month see how far it gets you as a pro photographer are you seeing this like this is insane insane like absolutely insane martin scholler
Now I'm going to show you this other photographer. I'm going to show you this other photographer. Guess what? This is another photographer. This photographer, his name's Martin Scholler. Is this Martin Scholler? Absolutely. Absolutely. It says right here, it's his website. But guess what? Whose photographs are these? If I saw this, this in a book, if I saw this in a magazine, would I know this was him? Absolutely not. Why? Because this is his other work because he got so tired of making this close-up picture and being asked to make this close-up picture over and over and over and over and over and over again. But it made him a household name. Without that body of work, there is no this. There is no this. There is no him being able to express himself editorially and showing his skill sets and all the other stuff that yes, he does have the ability to do with his camera. But guess what? This work doesn't look like him because he doesn't apply any of the rules that he applies to his other photography. Do you see? Do you see? This is completely a different photographer, which is why when you deviate your style, every time you look through the camera, all you're doing is diluting the impact of the strongest style that you have producing. Like you have one of your photos is the hottest, craziest shit that you do. But if you're not going back and revisiting it over and over and over and over again with different faces, you're not creating a body of work. And then if you're not creating a body of work, then like, you know? So again, all Martin Scholler, but still doesn't look like Martin Scholler. But if I showed you this first, you would be really into this work and not know that this is the guy who shot the close-up, right? Okay, I'm gonna show you one more example before I go one more example and yes we did talk about his photography a skill or a talent i think that we've come up with the answer of this photography is both a skill and a talent you can't do it without the talent it is not mathematics it's not calculus it is an artistic expression and without that creative core without being able to tap into that creativity that exists all around us and make that connection. Although technically, yes, you can make photos like a technician, but do your photos have soul? Are you telling a story and are you making an impact in the world at all? Okay, one more photographer. And um, this photographer, again, is going to share and show you the power of style. The photographer that I'm sharing with you is Platon. And Platon, um, Corey Vanderplue, after assisting me and becoming a photographer, he moved to New York and began assisting Platon. And um, Corey learned a lot from Platon and he learned a lot from me. And if you look at Corey's style, it's like a little bit of a smash between Platon and himself. Okay, let's look at Platon. Platon makes he makes five photos, okay? He makes five photos, five, and I'm gonna show you. He makes a black and white close-up, which you see here, which you see here, 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 here. He makes a black and white wide angle with small heads and big hands which you see here, 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 exaggerated bodies, here, here, here. He makes a color wide angle, always with a blue cast and vignetting on the corners, always with a blue cast. It is a wide angle color portrait, which you see here, 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 he makes the color close-up 
the same way as the black and white, only with a blue cast and the vignetting, which you see here. 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 He does this same picture with the rear lights off in color, which he does here. Here, here, he does the same picture in black and white, which you see here, 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 and he does a photo that I call the wild card, and the wild card is this photo is a wild card. This photo is a wild card. This photo is a wild card. This one. This one. This one. Now, now that I've given you the five photos that Platon makes, I want you to look at another category and look at his style. He makes five photos. Wild card. Wild card. Do you see how important rules are when it comes to photography? And then now let's see how how his work is used in the world. He shoots more covers than almost any photographer and editorial. Like you see how he applies his wide angle portrait, black and white in color on white. You see how he applies his wild card. You see how he applies his black and white, his close up, his color, the cast, the vignetting, all of these rules make up Platon and Platon, if you wish to call him that, and the style. It's rules. And because he follows his rules so disciplined, people know the photograph that they're going to get and they can picture it on the cover. So they want a Platon picture of Kissinger on the cover. They want a platen photo. So once you establish the style, it becomes exact what it is that you shoot because you have rules. And when people hire you, they know exactly what they're going to get because they're hiring you for your style. So again, the people who are successful at photography, they make pictures and they create rules for themselves and they create limitations for themselves. And those rules and limitations make it so their style becomes desirable because their style is consistent. And when you're consistent, your potential clients know exactly what they're gonna get. So that is also a skill, but also a talent you know, and following all the magazine editorial rules, knowing how to shoot to layout, all of that stuff, that's skills. You learn that as you go, but the talent for photography, you can see clearly the photographers that I'm sharing with you have a clear talent for photography. Welcome, New RD. Member. Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate you. Thank you, RD. Let's go. So rules. Is photography a skill or a talent? I think it's both, but without the skill, without being able to tap into that creativity, without being able to tap into that universal creativity and connect it with your own personal talent, you're making empty photos, empty photos with no soul. The ones who connect that beautifully, you see their photographs seem effortless. And also the ones that create rules for themselves, it makes it super easy to hire them. Someone asked me earlier, like, is it hard to get your first gig? Not if you think this way. If you think this way, it's super easy. You're going to have a rush for people to hire you. And in fact, how you, how you create even more of a rush 
is that you tell people that you don't take on assignments. You're not ready yet. You're still developing. You're still developing your style. Like people trying to give you money and you're like, yeah, I, maybe try me like in a month or so. I'm still like that person is going to respect you because you care so much about your craft. You don't want to fuck up and you're telling them, no, just give me like another month or two. I'm developing this thing that I'd like to do for you. Let me have that fully developed and then we can shoot like that kind of vibe. Now you're making clients like so excited and so hyped. Platon. I hope that inspired guys. Again, I'm here to do nothing else but that is inspire you, show you like the mindset of a working pro. It's not necessarily what you think. It's not what you think. It has, it has like, it has this much to do with photography. I mean, the photography side of it, like this part of it is this important. It's this important. It's the most important of all, the work. It's the most important, but there's a there's also like a skill which is like a mathematical technical way that I approach my photography like I shoot like a technician but there's also an artistic inspiration which is the whole reason that I'm doing this in the first place so guys do let me know if you have any questions um I give away assignments every week um, this week's assignment I gave on Thursday. So if you haven't watched Thursday's episode, just to remind you, the people who are members of this channel have access to me for photo reviews. I do photo reviews every Thursday, spend hours reviewing and looking at every single photo that's submitted. Um, you're allowed to submit one photo per week um, to my submission folder and I do extensive photo reviews. This is why people become members of this channel because that's so beneficial to have eyes on your work from a pro. I'm gonna see stuff that you don't see. So um, yeah, do that. Make sure that you join the Discord. Um, yeah, there is a, is there voice chat on the server? Um, voice chat on the server if you're a member, Akos. That's members only stuff. You gotta become a member here on, on YouTube and then connect your Discord to your YouTube channel. Once you do that, you'll see the voice channels and all that stuff, but I keep that for members. The people who are the members propel my server. People who are just subscribers, although I appreciate everybody who watches me, um, and I do believe there should be free content. There's tons of stuff for my subscribers in my server, but voice channels are not one of them. Um, all right, so guys, I hope you found this beneficial. Hope you found this helpful. I am going to wrap up today's episode unless you guys have any other questions for me. Um, Akko said that he needs to make a um, photo series for art class. Does anyone have any suggestions or ideas? Those suggestions and ideas have to come from within Akos. Like that's the whole idea. You're a photographer, which means you're an idea factory, which means you're an idea factory you i have ideas falling out of my pockets if i just think if i get the ask to do anything i have 35 ideas falling out of my pockets i'm tapped in so you got to tap in and how you tap in is by finding places for inspiration the biggest place for inspiration is behance if you go to behance and look to see what the best photographers in the world are doing if you go to behance um let me just log in here um, if you go to Behance and go to Discover right here and under Discover, you click, this is Behance.net, you click Photography, you're going to see the best photography in the world of all genres. So whatever type of photography you can think of, you're going to find the best of that photography and understand like this is also going to show you how high the bar is like the bar is super high so it's going to show you like your quality has to be super high and looking at behance if you're trying to have ideas for a photo series for school look to where professionals live looking to other people for ideas for you that's like you are the idea factory. You got to be the source of those ideas. As photographers, we all have to come up with our own ideas. You know, it's up to us. It's up to us. That's what makes you the photographer. You know, I should be coming to you and saying, what's your idea for this project? You know, 
ideas they're everywhere creativity is everywhere you just got to tap into it guys i hope you found that helpful i do this show every sunday at 2 p.m eastern time which is new york time if you are in europe it is 2 p.m eastern time i also do ask a photo pro tuesdays and thursdays at 6 p.m eastern time is our time i know the 6 p.m eastern time is a little bit harder from some of for some of my european viewers but i have pulled my audience and asked do i change the time make it earlier do i leave the time where it is the people who want me to make it earlier all want me to make it at different times the people who and there's 50 percent of 51 percent of the people who want me to keep it where it is so tuesdays and thursdays shows remain at 6 p.m eastern time of course you can always watch the replay know that this commercial free episode was brought to you by the members of this channel if you became a member um thank you and because of you i'm able to have hour long plus however long my live streams are without commercials i do that in order to honor you my viewers because i know having commercials during a live stream disrupts the flow so however long my live streams are there's never commercials once i end the live stream and you're watching a replay you get hit with commercials um that is the tax for watching it after the fact but i do appreciate you if you are watching it after the fact make sure that you leave replay gang in the comments if you did make it this far lastly i'm asking you to make a portfolio picture within your niche that shows a hero vibe meaning a hero picture is the front picture in your portfolio the picture that represents you and your style the picture that represents this is my best photograph that i could make right now your portfolio your best picture your hero picture last week that was the assignment this week many of you did that assignment i gave critiques on all of you i've asked you to make some corrections you made some mistakes many of you I asked you to do that a picture again and resubmit so I can see that you're actually leveling up. If I don't, you make a mistake and I tell you how to fix it and say, go shoot it again and fix that mistake. Now, if you're not doing that, that's lazy. That's on you. This is exactly how school would be. It's how photography school would be. If I ask you to reshoot an assignment, you would reshoot the assignment and resubmit it to your professor. Your professor would look at it and be like, that's an A. It's like, it's like I'm giving you an opportunity to redo something. You don't get that opportunity with commercial work. You don't get that opportunity with editorial work. Like you submit an assignment, the art director's like, uh, could you shoot this again? No, because that guy who you shot, he's gone. He's on a plane, he's gone. Most of your editorial working life as a photographer, it is one chance, one chance to get a perfect session, one chance to develop a bigger, a most more amazing reputation, one chance to affect people, give them that dopamine hit and make sessions like you feel like magic, like get one chance to do that. You do that all when you're shooting. So if you're shooting sessions and you're dealing with clients and you're mailing it in, those people, they talk. So yeah. You only get one chance to make a first impression. Make sure that yours is a great one. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday. Make sure you watch my latest video. Seven ways that you can reclaim your time to shoot. Super easy to reclaim your time to shoot if you have discipline. I laid it out super clearly. Um, as to how to do that. Make sure you watch that next. If you're new here, thank you. I love hearing about how people found me. Definitely leave in the comments how you Let's found go. me. Of course, if you became a subscriber recently, your name is scrolling across the bottom of the screen because I like to show you love. If you became a member recently, your name is going across the top of the screen. Because of you, we have this amazing commercial free experience. So if you're a member of this channel and that, those numbers are going up in such an amazing way. And I thank you guys for that. I appreciate everybody who watches me. I appreciate everybody who supports, who believes, who submits photos. Cardi crew. I love you all. Thanks for watching.